Hi, I am Girish Kishnani, and you are watching 5-Minute Learnings. Welcome to the fourth video in the series on theories of personality development. Today, we'll explore Lev Vygotsky's sociocultural theory of cognitive development. Psychologist Lev Vygotsky believed that parents, caregivers, peers, and the culture at large are responsible for developing the brain's higher-order functions. According to Vygotsky, human development relies on social interaction and, therefore, can differ among cultures. Sociocultural theory stresses the role that social interaction plays in psychological development. It suggests that human learning is largely a social process, and that our cognitive functions are formed based on our interactions with those around us who are more skilled or more knowledgeable others. According to the sociocultural perspective, our psychological growth is guided, in part, by people in our lives who are in mentor-type roles, such as teachers and parents. Other times, we develop our values and beliefs through our interactions within social groups or by participating in cultural events. Vygotsky contended that children are born with basic biological constraints on their minds. Each culture, however, provides tools of intellectual adaptation. These tools allow children to use their abilities in a way that is adaptive to the culture in which they live. For example, one culture might emphasize memory strategies such as note-taking. Another might use tools like reminders or rote memorization, a technique that uses repetition. These nuances influence how a child learns, providing the tools that are appropriate to their culture. The zone of proximal development, an important concept in sociocultural theory is known as the zone of proximal development. According to Vygotsky, this is the distance between the actual development level of the learner, as determined by independent problem solving and the level of potential development as determined through problem solving under adult guidance, or in collaboration with more capable peers, as children are allowed to stretch their skills and knowledge, often by observing someone who is slightly more advanced than they are. They are able to progressively extend this zone, experts and researchers suggest that learning under the guidance of more knowledgeable others can be beneficial. For example, research suggests that learning in the zone of proximal development can help increase skills and knowledge. Other research has shown that teaching students in their zone of proximal development can be particularly important if they work in challenging environments and perform complex tasks. Piaget's theory stressed that a child's interactions and explorations impact development, Vygotsky asserted the essential role that social interactions play. Another important difference between the two is that Piaget's theory suggests that development is largely universal, Vygotsky asserts because cultures can vary so dramatically, both the course and content of intellectual development are not as universal as Piaget believed. Here's how sociocultural theory can be implemented in the real world in ways that can benefit learners. In the classroom, understanding the zone of proximal development can be helpful for teachers. They may first assess students to determine their current skill level. Educators can then offer instruction that stretches the limits of each child's capabilities. Teachers can help promote this expansion by planning and organizing classroom instruction and lessons. For example, Lesser skilled children can be paired with students who have a higher skill level. Using hints, prompts, and direct instruction to help kids improve their ability levels. Scaffolding, where the teacher provides specific prompts to move the child progressively forward toward a goal. In socialization and play, Vygotsky's theory also stressed the importance of play in learning. Vygotsky believed that through playing and imagining, children can further stretch their conceptual abilities and knowledge of the world. Teachers and parents can use this concept by providing children with plenty of opportunities for play experiences, like role playing, games, and reenactments of real events, to boost a child's growth of abstract thought. Takeaways Although Vygotsky's sociocultural theory only gained credence after his death, research has helped validate the role that those around us play in shaping how we develop as individuals. Even though not everyone agrees as to the specifics of this development, the sociocultural perspective does contribute to this understanding. It has also influenced other modern theories of human development, such as those related to cognitive growth and education. That's all on Lev Vygotsky's sociocultural theory of cognitive development. In the next video, we shall explore Kohlberg's theory of moral development. Hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and follow or subscribe to my channel 5-Minute Learnings.
and do remember to hit the bell icon to get notified on new content. Thanks for watching.